By the mid-1970s, the push toward the moon had come to an end. Though there was still much left to do, there were still tremendous applications still available in low Earth orbit. And the Soviet Union would take the early lead in this endeavor with the Salyut space stations. Come 1975, three successful Salyut stations had made orbit, Salyut 1, 3, and 4, yet each one only housing one crew. It was the intention for the 18th Soyuz flight to break the cycle, and be the first Soviet crew to give their station a second crew. On April 5, 1975, veteran cosmonauts Vasily Lazarev and Oleg Makarov board their craft on a mission to rendezvous with Salyut 4. Lazarev and Makarov were no strangers to each other, both having flown their first mission together on Soyuz 12 to test the upgraded Soyuz spacecraft after the ill-fated flight of Soyuz 11, which caused the death of the Salyut 1 crew on re-entry. As the station passes overhead, all engines ignite and the Soyuz launch stack leaves the surface of Baikonur Cosmodrome. And two minutes into flight, the booster stages drop away, leaving the core stage to continue through powered flight. Four minutes into flight, the emergency escape tower separates, along with a protective fairing surrounding the three-module Soyuz spacecraft. And just shy of five minutes, just like all vehicles that came before, the core stage exhausts its fuel, and separation motors fire to cut it free as the third stage engine ignites. The engine burned normally, but unlike all previous craft, only three of the six clamps release, leaving the dead weight of the core stage still attached. It would take only a few seconds for the engine exhaust to break the remaining clamps free, but by that time the craft had already begun to deviate from its trajectory. Seven seconds after third stage ignition, the trajectory deviated such that the auto-abort sequence began. This may sound trivial, but the deviation was drastic, in that by the time the orbital module blew away and the descent module separated from the remaining booster, it was pointed straight back toward Earth. In normal emergency abort scenarios, the spacecraft receives a force of 15 Gs, but in this angle, the speed was far greater, resulting in a 21 G deceleration. This overloading could have potentially put far greater strain on the parachutes than they were capable of taking, but fortunately for the crew, the chute deployed properly and brought the capsule to a slow touchdown after a flight of only 21 minutes. But it is here that things got real interesting. The craft did not land on flat terrain. In fact, its touchdown was on a snow-covered slope, which it proceeded to start tumbling down, the two helpless cosmonauts trapped inside. The metal shell of a spacecraft rolled through the snow, bouncing on rocks and vegetation as its parachute dragged behind it. And unknown to the two trapped crew members, they were tumbling toward a 500-foot sheer drop, which they could surely not survive. By pure luck, the parachute snagged on vegetation and stopped the craft before its sure catastrophic plunge. Outside their vehicle, the snow was chest deep and the temperature just under 20 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition to being bitter cold, they had no way of knowing exactly where they landed, but the assumption was that they were in China. And relations between the Soviet Union and China were not exactly cozy, and as they started to slip into their cold weather gear, they began destroying documents regarding their planned military experiments for the aborted station stay. When recovery forces began to arrive, the crew were informed that they actually landed in gorno altaisk about 500 miles north of the Chinese border, well within the Soviet Union. But the unnecessarily destroyed documents were a trivial concern and did not result in any disciplinary action or removal from flight status as Makarov would go on to fly two more missions years afterward. Both men were recovered safely with no serious ill effects from the aborted launch and crash landing. The mission, however, would not receive the intended Soyuz 18 designation, as it had never reached orbit. It therefore remains on record as Soyuz 7KT No. 39, and remains as the only incident in which a manned booster had failed at high altitude. And of course, the third time a second station crew had failed to reach their target. But still the cycle would be broken, as Soyuz 18 proper would make its successful rendezvous in the following month. Its crew certainly keeping in mind the events of the mission that could have been, and the dangerous rescue that will forever mark this week in space history.